uh, yeah, as you say, John had a problem and, uh, and Lenny sorted that out for him. But now, now Lenny really is an associate of John's now. So John says to me, uh, you know, Lenny, he's such a nice fellow, John, isn't he? You know, thank you for introducing me to him. I mean, you know, we can do a lot of things together. And I said, yeah, that's, that's good, John. I'm pleased that you got on well with him. But let me remind you of something, John, and you must remember this because it's very important. Lenny is a very nice man, you know, great company. And he's great to be around, but don't ever try, don't ever try and have him, John. Don't ever try and have him over, because you'll know. You can tell when you're lying to him. Don't ever try that. And as long as you don't do that, you'll get on well with him, and I'm sure you'll make lots of money. Fast forward, they was doing all right, then all of a sudden, John decides that he wants to go alone, shall we say, you know? So Lenny gets in touch with me, and he says, have you seen your friend John? I said, uh, I haven't seen him for a while, so he said, well, look, can you do me a favour? When you see him, can you tell him that he owes me some money? So I said, all right. So when I see John, I said, yeah, Lenny said to me that you owe him some money. He said, no, tell Lenny the party's over now. It's finished. So I said, all right. So when I told Lenny, he said, the party ain't over. It's just started. He knows it and I know it. You tell him, John, that I want my money and I want it regular, as I've been getting it every week. When I go and see John and I say to him, John, he says he wants his money. Then John says to me, you tell Lenny that if he comes round here for his money, I've got a double barrel shotgun downstairs and I'll blow him away. I won't hesitate, John. Make sure he knows that. Now, I want to go back to your dad with that bad news tonight. <laughs> so anyway, so when I see your dad, he said, what did John say? I said, he said, the party's over. <laughs> but anyway, cutting on story short, John's told me he's not, fr he's not afraid, he's not going to go along with it, and that's it. Next minute... My bleeper is going a million miles an hour. Phone me, John. Urgent, urgent, urgent. Must have been 50 urgents. And I phoned him up. I said, what's the matter, John? What's the matter? He said, he's been round here, Lenny McLean. He's knocked on the door once. That wasn't good enough. He said, he's ripped the door right off his hinges. He's slung the door in the main road. He's gone into my house. He's ripped every door off every hinge looking for me. He's absolutely smashed my ass to smithereens. He said, when he would have left, he said, I'll be back. <laughs> the thing that I'm trying to say is, I warned John when I first introduced him to Lenny, don't ever try it, John, because you will see another side of mm -hmm. Lenny. And unfortunately, he, he died in you. But, but another time with your dad as well, it's like, I remember when I was up at your, uh, with your mum and dad's flat and he was going to fight, uh, I think it might have been the uh, Mad Gypsy or something, mm -hmm. you know? And I think he must have known that there was going to be problems there because uh, he was going to go. He said, I'll tell you what, John, uh, you stay behind today. He said, you, you stay in, uh, and, and keep our company. He said, I'll, I'll be there about an hour. He said, no, you want some Chinese? He said, I can pick some up on the way home. You know? And I went, <laughs> and if that's into someone, he's going to go down and have a tear up. It didn't you know? phase him or affect him. It never phased him. All he was worried about is now, Val, did you say you wanted prawn curry or do you want a chicken chow mein? <laughs> it's like unbelievable, but that's the way he was. He had no fear. He had so much confidence yeah. in his own ability. Yeah. You know, when you're that confident, when you when you know that you're that good, yeah. you don't fear anybody or you don't fear anything. When you've got that sort of confidence, you yeah. know you're going to do the job. You know what your capabilities are. Yeah. You know, and as I said to you before, in a street fight, you know. He was the most confident person in the world. He didn't care how many people there was. No. He, didn't, he didn't worry how many if they was mob handed. He didn't matter that's really how big they was. Yeah. He didn't make no difference. He had so much confidence in himself, he really believed, and rightly so, that he was unbeatable. And he was. When he was in his prime, when he was at his peak, there was no one to touch him on the street.